I would love to hear your theory on simulation theory, that we are all in this quote-unquote matrix uh, simulation. What is your theory behind that? So Nick Bostrom and others are quite famous for, for this kind of theory. And the the assumption, I, I should spell it out just a little bit, what, what version I'm talking about. They typically will say, you know, that you and I and the world we see around us, we think it's the truth, but it really isn't. It's just there's some computer programmer, some pimply head kid with their laptop in another reality that is has programmed this all up. And we're just a simulation in their little laptop. But then you can recurse that back. But that person, that, that pimply head programmer is not the final reality because there's another pimply head programmer yet a deeper reality with their laptop that's programming so, them. Uh, so we can go this all the way back. And you, and you go all the way back. There's finally some laptop and some programmer at the fundamental reality that's the start of this whole thing. So the probably, they say the probability that we're at the base, given that there could be thousands of these, probably that we're the ones at the base is zero. So we're probably in a simulation. That's sort of the other. Now, what they say then is that the base reality they assume is a physical kind of space-time reality. So there, there's still a physicalist framework. And they're assuming that a properly programmed computer can generate conscious experiences or the illusion of conscious experiences. And to date, I mean, many of my colleagues who are studying consciousness believe that. But when you ask them, and there are many, many theories. So there's integrated information theory, there's global workspace theory, orchestrated collapse of quantum states of neuronal microtubules. Um, there's um, attentional schema theories. There are high order theories, first order theory. There's, there's tons and tons of theories. But and and all of them, in one way or another, are saying we can't. If you give me certain functional properties, the right kind of functional properties of certain kinds of physical systems, then I can give you conscious experiences out of that. Taste of chocolate, the smell of garlic, and so forth. Great. So that's that's what they claim that they can do, that we, our scientific theories, will start with some functional description uh, of some system. And, you, and they're always thinking of some kind of physical system, maybe neurons or some mm -hmm. you know, circuits in an uh, artificial intelligence system or something like that. And then we will give you conscious experiences emerging out of it or the illusion of conscious experiences emerging out of it. So I, I and these are my friends and colleagues, and they're brilliant. And they've been I mean, they are they are brilliant. But when I ask them, and these are my friends, I'll, I'll you know, ask them case, you know, like Stuart Hameroff with um, orchestrated collapse of quantum states of neural microtubules or Giulio Tononi for the IIT. Great. So um, been at it for several decades. So what what conscious experience have you been able to show? I mean, the mm -hmm. functional mm -hmm. structure for like the taste of chocolate or mint. Can you give what, what, which which one which one? There are millions of colors. Millions of, I presume by now you have hundreds of thousands of, of conscious experiences that you've given me, you've written down the functional thing that mm -hmm. must be the taste of men, the functional thing that must be this shade of red. There, there, you must have hundreds of thousands of these. So just give me one. Zero. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> they have, there, nobody has anything. So there are, so the, it, it's so bad that, that Steven Pinker in his, his 19, uh, 2018 book, Enlightenment Now said, you know, what we may have to do is just stipulate that you know, there's this functional pattern. He, he, this, and he was talking about, I think, the global workspace theory. Mm -hmm. We'll have to stipulate that this conscious experience it corresponds to this state of the global workspace. Well, my attitude is, you know, you're stipulating the conscious experiences, you're stipulating the physical stuff, you're stipulating the functional stuff. It's all stipulation. There, there's no explanation going on here. So, so I, I say all that to say that the now to get back to your question. This simulation theory is assuming that the computer and functional properties of the computer can actually give us conscious experiences or the illusion of conscious experiences. And there's not a shred of evidence in terms of successful scientific theories that that's, that's, that's feasible. There's is, nothing on the table that says you should believe that. Is there a world where in the future, maybe in your lifetime, maybe in mine, maybe in my kid's lifetime, where there'll be physicists um, and theorists that are going to be cross-pollinated with spiritualists because it's the only thing left to kind of go after. Because once 
you you keep running into walls with these theories uh, and math. Math uh, eventually also runs into walls uh, because you haven't cracked it yet. But when you start getting into spirituality, which is what the ancients were talking about, and we could talk about the ancients in a minute, mm -hmm. about it seems that they are transcending reality. And there is there is proof of different types of transcensions of realities. You know, there's psychedelics that take you into different realms, different realities. There's so many things that are unexplainable by physics, but yet there is something happening. So to find a physicist or a theorist that can bridge between the two and finally open things up in a way that one or the other can't do by themselves. I think that's where we're all going. Would you agree? Yes, I think that the spiritual traditions have been saying that space-time isn't fundamental for thousands of years. The Vedic texts, yeah, of course. And the scientists are coming to that party late. We're, we're late to that party. <laughs> but 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 the high-energy theoretical physicists are saying, yes, space-time is not fundamental. It's Space-time is doomed. So I think that humanity... We've had the spiritual traditions and the scientific, and they've tended since Galileo and his imprisonment mm -hmm. and so forth by the church. There's been a little bit of antipathy between the two and, and distrust and so forth. But I think both have a piece of the picture and both have a problem. Mm -hmm. So the, the piece of the picture that the scientists have is the scientific method. We know now to do mathematical models, have hard-nosed standards, no BS, Give me an experiment. Give me the math. We go test it, and so forth. So that's 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 important. They've assumed that space time is fundamental. They've been physicalists. That's been um, a useful hypothesis for a few centuries, but now it's over. And but and it's but most scientists don't know it's over. It's the high energy theoretical physicists who who are spreading the word. It's over, and we need to to go. So, but. Now, the spiritual traditions have, are there. They're saying, hey, we've been out there beyond space time for thousands of years. Welcome to the party. You know, you're know, latecomers. Right. But now what the spiritual traditions tell us, they say it's very, very important. None of our writings are the truth. They're pointers to the truth. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're mm -hmm. very, very careful to say that the Tao Te Ching says the Tao that can be spoken of is not the true Tao. Right. And if you understand that, then it's fine It's to read the rest of the book. If you don't understand that, you'll think that you're seeing the truth. No, you're getting a pointer. Just like I, I started off with a sense of definition, and partly for this very reason, I pointed to consciousness in a certain way. I can't, unless you don't, if you don't know consciousness is yourself, I can't help you. If you've never tasted mint, I can't help you. I can give you a piece of mint and let you taste it and then say, that is mint, and I point to it. So, so, so that's in the sense that the spiritual traditions are pointing to the spiritual realm. You, if you don't experience it yourself, no word will get you there. But what the spiritual traditions are missing is mathematical precision in their pointers. They understand that their words are pointers, but the mathematical pointers tell you their limits. Einstein's mathematics for space-time tells you that that pointer, the space-time pointer, falls apart at 10 to the minus 33 centimeters and 10 to the minus 43 seconds. That is an antidote to dogmatism. And it tells you, you need a new and deeper pointer. To watch the full video, click on the link below. And don't forget to subscribe.